Are you in the mood for comfort food, but also in the mood for soup? Well, if that's you, I have the perfect solution for you here. This is my chicken pot pie soup, combining the best of both worlds. Whether there's a chill in the air where you are, or you're just in the mood for soup, you've come to the right place. I'm gonna show you how this is made, coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name's Roy. I'm a home cook and amateur baker and I am here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Although let's admit it, they're usually mine. And today is no exception. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make my chicken pot pie soup. It's not chicken pot pie, but it's just as comforting. And I guess we are already in spring, but that doesn't mean there won't be some chilly days that you want something nice and warm and cozy and comforting to eat. And I've got just the thing for you here. So now let's go over the ingredients. I have here four cups of chicken broth. One of these containers is four cups. So just grabbing one of those you don't have to worry about measuring. I have, of course, my cooking spray. Here I have one 10 and a half ounce can of 98% fat-free cream of chicken soup. Sometimes you'll see it listed as healthy request. I don't know why Campbell's does that. But then other brands, you just want the 98% fat-free. I have here two and a half cups of shredded hash browns, and they've been out thawing for a little bit. I wanted some potato in there, but I wanted to make it easy, and I didn't want to use too much and have the bites and points go up. So that is two and a half cups, which is only just five bites. I'm on the Healthy Better Balance plan, which is equivalent to the old WW Blue plan, which is basically the WW plan at this point. But I didn't want to have to prep potatoes and do all of that. You can if you want. If you go up to 250 grams of russet potatoes, it'll be the same number of bites and points, but that's like two small potatoes. And I thought we might get a little more out of the hash browns. I have here one cup of frozen peas. Those have been sitting thawing for a little bit. They're not fully thawed as you can probably tell, but that's fine. I have here a cup of frozen corn, same situation. Now you could replace the peas and corns with canned stuff. You would just drain it and you wouldn't have to add it in until the end just to warm them through. I have here one cup of almond milk just to get some of that creaminess. And to add to that creaminess, I have here one half cup of fat-free half and half. You do not have to find the fat-free half and half. Some people I know sometimes I have difficulty finding it, especially there was a patch there where I couldn't find it anywhere. If you can't find it or you don't wanna go looking for it, just add another one third cup of almond milk. You want a little bit less because the fat-free half and half is gonna be thicker. So you don't wanna water the soup down by having too much almond milk. So just add one third cup in place of the half a cup of fat-free half and half. I have here one half of a large onion that I've diced and that comes to about a cup if you're using the frozen stuff. It's about a cup, but you can play around with that if you like a little more onion flavor or a little less. I have here three stalks of celery that I have sliced widthwise. That also comes to about a cup. And here I have some sliced carrots. Now, if you've seen this channel before, I tend to make it easy on myself and I buy baby carrots, and then I just slice them across the width because peeling carrots, cutting them, dicing them, chopping them, it's a bit much for me. You could use frozen if you wanted, but that would be one cup of carrots. I'm using 12 baby carrots, so 12 baby carrots is about the same as three medium carrots. So it's your call which way you go. 
I have here two tablespoons of flour. That's just to help us thicken it up a little bit without giving us too many bites and points. I have here one tablespoon of minced garlic. That is about three cloves of garlic if you prefer mincing it yourself. I have here one tablespoon of dried parsley, one teaspoon of dried thyme, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of salt, and up here I have one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. You can use fresh parsley and fresh thyme, but you would use double the amount. So you would have two tablespoons of fresh parsley and two teaspoons of fresh thyme. And you would not add them in when I'm going to add them in, which is towards the beginning, because they're dried, I need them to hydrate. If you're using fresh, you always want to add fresh at the end. That way they are not losing a lot of their flavor. All right, so I think that's everything. I don't really have a lot of shuffling to do, except I do have to move the camera so that you can look into the pot. So I will be right back to get us started. Okay, so I have my large stock pot. You can use a Dutch oven, whatever you have. I'm just going to spray the bottom of this with some cooking spray. It is set over medium heat at the moment. We are going to be playing with the temperature. We're going to have this at medium for now, then we're gonna go up to medium high and medium, then medium high, then medium again. So there'll be some bouncing around but I'll let you know when you need to do what. Now, just to clear a few of the extra dishes away, I did mix my herbs together, the parsley, thyme, salt, and pepper, and I added the fat-free half and half to my almond milk just to clear away a few things. They're going in at the same time, so it's fine. Okay, so the pot feels hot enough now. I'm gonna add in my onion, celery, and carrot. Then I'm just going to stir that around. You want to let these soften about seven to 10 minutes over medium. They won't have enough time if you don't to soften up while the soup itself is cooking. This just gives them a little jump start. So I'll be back when we're ready to move on. You know, I just realized I did not have my chicken out. You can't have a chicken pot pie soup without the chicken. I knew I'd prepped it ahead of time. And if you wanna see how I cook this for this soup or for chicken salad, I do have a video coming out on Sunday that's part of a collab with Sandy from Life with Sandy. And in that, I show you how I cook my chicken breasts to get them ready for salads or soups or what have you, or the casserole that I'm going to be doing on Sunday. But anyways, I did want to mention, if I don't throw it around, there is one and a half pounds. It's about two chicken breasts. You can play around with that because for me and others on WW, chicken breast is zero. So it won't really alter the bites and points, but it will affect the calories and macros depending on how much you add. But I've added one and a half pounds, so that's what the macros and calories will reflect. So there is the chicken. Let me set that down before I end up throwing it. I'm feeling a little twitchy today. For those of you who are new here, I have myopathy and neuropathy so my muscles and nerves don't always work correctly so i have been in the habit of throwing things unintentionally you haven't seen that i usually edit that out but you can often hear it in my voice my muscles in my neck and jaw will tighten up but it is what it is all right so you want to stir this frequently while it's cooking you don't have to go crazy babysitting it. You can let it sit for a few minutes and then come back and stir it. You just don't really want it to get very brown or that will affect the color of the overall soup. So I'm gonna give this another probably five minutes and I will be back. Okay, so that looks pretty good right there, nice and softened. And before I move on, I do want to apologize not only did I forget to bring the chicken out, I do have the board back out for those of you who enjoy seeing the board. <sighs> it's just always something. But anyways, we are back on track. We have our chicken and our board. So now what we're going to do is take our garlic and add that in and stir that through. We just want to heat this 
until it becomes fragrant, about 30 seconds or so. It doesn't take very long. And now that that's fragrant, we're going to stir in our flour. I usually like to sprinkle that around and then just stir that to coat the vegetables until you don't really see much of the flour. You want to cook the flour off a little bit so it doesn't have a raw flour taste. And then we're going to add in our salt, pepper, parsley, and thyme and add that all in here and stir that through. And you can see on the bottom of the pan that the flour has started to settle there and cook a little bit, which is fine. Once we add in the soups, it's all going to start to come up. So don't worry about that. But you just want to let this cook through for about two minutes. All right, so it's been two minutes. Now I'm going to take the chicken broth. I'm using no salt added. You don't have to. I'm just trying to watch the salt around here because Paul has to watch his salt intake. So we're going to slowly add this in because you don't want to add it all in and then that flour on the bottom starts to set up and doesn't really mix in. So I'm going to add it slowly as I stir to help stir up that flour and help to hydrate it. Slowly add that in and you can scrape at the bottom, get some of that flour up and moving around. It should come up fairly easily. So I'm just stirring that and adding this in and I can feel little bumps on the bottom of the pan from where the flour is still adhered. So I'm just going to scrape at those spots as I stir and add in the rest of this broth. When you feel them you can like move back and forth try to like rub the flour from the bottom of the pot. And I think I have the majority of it up. So now what I'm going to do is add in our cream of chicken soup and our mustard, our Dijon mustard. You don't really taste the mustard in this. It just gives it a nice little acidic flavor that really does enhance the soup, I think. If you needed to leave it out or didn't want to put it in, you could, but it just adds a little background note of acid that we really enjoy. Makes the, the soup a little more complex. All right, and I don't know if you can tell, but the soup is already thickening up somewhat. Part of it is from the flour hydrating with the broth. Some of it is from the cream soup, which is already thick. Okay, now that that's all combined, I'm just going to add in our hash brown potatoes, shredded hash browns, just add those in. You could maybe even use those little cubes of hash browns that I've seen in the freezer section. I haven't tried it, so I'm not sure how that would work, but you could give it a try. The starches from the potato are going to help this to thicken up still more. So now what we're going to do now that the potatoes are in, we're going to turn this up. As I told you before, we're going to be going up and down on temperature. Turn this up to medium high. We're going to let it come to a boil. And what that's going to do is help to further thicken this by hydrating the flour more and letting the flour seep out into the broth. It's also going to help to release some of the starches in the hash brown potatoes. So we're just going to let this come up to a boil and then I'll tell you the next step. Okay, so it's been only about two minutes. It's starting to boil, as you can see. I'm going to let it sit here and boil for about one minute. And you may notice that my soup looks a little dark. It's because the chicken broth that I use tends to be a little darker than other chicken broths. Like when I use collagen, that's a little more yellow. This one's a little yellow with a bit of brown in it. So my soup looks a little darker. If yours ends up looking a little different in color, don't worry about it. It's probably just the broth. All right, so it's boiled for about a minute. Here we go with the temperature again. We're going to drop it back down to medium. Now we're going to let this sit and simmer for about 20 minutes. Let all those veggies continue to soften. Let the soup continue to thicken. And you do want to stir this fairly often during that 20 minutes just to get things moving around so nothing's sitting too long on the bottom and perhaps scorching. So give me 20 minutes and I'll be back. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes and you can see as I stir, I hope, how thick this soup is. We're still going to add a few more things in, but this is what you want is a nice 
thick hearty soup. Just like chicken pot pie, you want a thick filling. Now one thing I did want to mention, in case any of you are uncertain of what a simmer is, or what I mean when I say let it simmer for 20 minutes. I did do a while back a recipe reading tutorial that I believe I mentioned this in. I'll card that up here in case you haven't seen it or you need to understand more of how to read a recipe. That's a good resource if you need it. But this right here, what we're doing in the pot, that is a simmer. It's like bubbles coming up, but it's not going crazy, bubbling, boiling. So I kind of think of it as simmering is like a cocktail party with people here and there. They're all over chatting away. That's what these little bubbles are, little conversations happening. It's not a dance party, which is what boiling would be. And we're going to be boiling again in a minute. So this is thickened up nicely. Now we're going to add in our chicken, our peas, our corn, and our almond milk and fat-free half and half. And just stir that all through. And you can see how the almond milk and fat-free half and half have lightened up our soup here. All right, so here we go one more time, bringing this up to medium-high. It should start boiling fairly quickly. Now, a couple of things. You could, as I think I said, use a rotisserie chicken for this. You could also, if you wanted, use leftover turkey. This would be great after Thanksgiving when you have some turkey leftovers. You could also do this with beef. It obviously would not be a chicken pot pie, but it would be a beef pot pie soup. So you can play around with it. And while this is coming up to boil, you do want to stir it so that, again, nothing is sitting too long on the bottom, especially now that the pot and the burner is hotter. So you do want to stir it a little bit while you're waiting for it to come up to a boil. Okay, so there's that dance party I was talking about. Everything's boiling. That's exactly what you want. Now, if you've ever heard the term rolling boil, that would mean that when I stir it like this, see I stir it and the boiling stops for a moment and then it'll start to come back up. A rolling boil, just so you know, is that once you stir it, it does not stop boiling. It still keeps boiling even as you stir. All right, so I'm going to turn this down to medium. This sits for 10 minutes and we're done. So I will be back. All right, so it has been 10 minutes. I'm going to turn this off and let this cool slightly before serving it because it's going to be very hot right now. But it looks delicious, smells amazing. I can't wait to have some. But hopefully you can see how thick the soup is compared to a basic like chicken noodle. It's a little bit thicker than that, but it's got a nice creaminess. It's not overly thick like a chowder. It's kind of like in the middle, but this is so good. I can't wait to dig in. Now this I am doing as six servings and it's about a cup and a half per serving. You could of course change that and make it a one cup serving, which would give you about nine servings. So if you were food prepping, say, you would have nine soups ready at hand. And you can freeze this just like pretty much any soup. It will last in the fridge for up to like five days or so. So now for the bites and points. This is going to be just two better balanced bites or blue points per serving as I'm doing it. If you reduce it to a cup, it might change. I'm not exactly sure where the marker is for where it would drop to one, but two is not bad for a cup and a half of a nice creamy soup. Now, if you're following calories, the calories for this would be 303. And if you're following macros, the fat would be 5.8 grams. The carbs would be 29.3 grams. The fiber would be 4.5 grams and the protein would be 32.1 grams as I'm doing it for six. Again, if you change the portion size, you'll get obviously a different number, but that's how I'm serving it. We like a nice portion around here. Sometimes we'll just have this with maybe a little bit of cracker, some toast or what have you to kind of give you that pot pie feeling like you have a crust. 
Now, if you enjoyed this recipe and this video, I'd appreciate the usual like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video. As I already mentioned, there is a collab coming up this Sunday, March 26th at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. I believe it's Eastern Time. Actually, I don't know if Sandy specified, but that's when we usually do them. Mine is coming out 9 a.m. Eastern. That's all I know. Also Sunday, I am going to be doing another live chat. We had a lot of fun last month when we did it, so I decided I'd do it at least monthly for now. Maybe I'll pick up the pace a little bit more depending on how things go. But the 26th at 2 p.m. Eastern time, we'll be doing a live stream if any of you can join in. Now the recipe for this, of course, is gonna be linked directly down below as well as the link to my blog itself if you're looking for any of my recipes or my recipe reading tutorials or healthy tutorials. If any of you are switching to healthy from WW because I know there's been a big hullabaloo, I do have a healthy app playlist that you want, might want to check out. I've had a lot of people coming over and saying that it really helped them to figure out the app because even though it's similar to WW's app, it's not exactly the same and there are a few quirks that you need to get to know. But also down there, there is my Amazon storefront, my Built Bar Rewards, Fetch Rewards, Skinny Syrups Code, and my social media if you wanna follow me over there. I have my Instagram and two Facebook groups that I'm part of, so go check out that description box for all sorts of information. Now that the soup has had a little chance to cool down, I think it's time for us to eat up. So I hope that you'll be enjoying some yourself very soon. So until next time, bye.